Hey guys, it's Brandon. Today's video is going to cover MOAs, Military Operations Area. And I guarantee you the information I'm going to give you in this video, you won't hear from any other instructor and you won't read it out of any Jefferson book or uh, any type of King Pilot book and stuff. So, all right, first things first, what is the Military Operations Area? Well, all it is is pretty much a little playground or practice area of uh, a bit of airspace that the Air Force, Navy, or Coast Guard, whoever needs to use, all right? And as we can see, like in a Jefferson book or anywhere else, they show it with a little shaded exterior line around it, perimeter, and then it'll have a name on it. So this is probably like an Air Force base somewhere, and then this is their little MOA area above it. So the MOAs, they could be a little block of airspace, or they could be hundreds of miles long. Just just depends, okay? So anyway, this is what it looks like on the charts. So let's jump and see exactly how it's broken up, okay? So like here are the, at the MOAs around Shepard Air Force Base and here in North Texas, typically they start around 8,000 feet MSL and extend up to 18,000 feet MSL, okay? And then normally, uh, this is what it looks vertically, but uh, when we look at it on a chart, all we see is just a little box, a little perimeter of a little purple shaded area, right? Okay, well this is what it looks vertically. I guarantee you won't hear this anywhere else. All right, so whenever the Air Force or Navy or whoever needs to set up a block of airspace, this is how they do it. They do it vertically, and then they'll cut it in half, and then they'll come up with little blocks of airspace inside the big block, all right? So just like this. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got 20 blocks of airspace inside of a big block. Now let's just say that this block of airspace is 150 miles long, okay? So each one of these blocks is a pretty big area that we can go practice in. So whenever you're flying a T6 or T38, you'll go and you'll get assigned a particular block. You know, say we're flying a T6 in the Air Force, we'll fly to the, to the block, we'll penetrate up in it, and then we'll do all of our uh, aerobatic practicing and stuff like that. So you can say, see here, like, well, if we got two airplanes in this block, one here, four, one, you know, we've got another solo pilot, we got uh, these guys are in separate blocks and they got their wingman and they're doing aerobatics and stuff like that. So what if we're in we're 172 or 150 or 182 and we wanted to go fly through that? Well, as you can see, we have a ton of airplanes in this block of airspace and it's going to be a hazard to us, okay? Because these guys, I guarantee you, they're not flying around, poking along, looking for traffic. These guys are flying five foot or three foot uh, separation, doing loops, lazy eights, all kinds of crazy aerobatics with their wingman right off the side. They're not looking for any traffic that's coming through the area. So all the books and everything state that you can fly through a, a MOA without talking to anybody, but it's not safe. These planes are going like a T-38. They could be pushing 500 knots and uh, going through a loop. Even the T-6, you know, they're cruising along at 250 knots and uh, doing crazy aerobatics and stuff. So is it safe to fly through there, flying a VFR, not talking to anybody? No. Now what I do is on my cross-country flights, I like to pick up VFR flight following, and they can notify me if this particular MOA that I'm going to be flying through is hot, and if so, you know how many aircraft are, are in the block or in the in the MOA area, and you know they can kind of tell you right off the bat, be like, hey, you might want to just go ahead and descend down below 8,000 feet and go around it and stuff. Like I was coming back from Del Rio one day. And the Brownwood MOA had a bunch of F-18s up there dogfighting and stuff. And I'm like, nah, I'm not going to bother those guys. Because if you penetrate this block of airspace, then if these guys pick you up on their T-cast inside the airplane, then they have to break up their uh, formation and go back to straight level flight until you go through. And then they can continue. So, like these guys, they're, they're training to be pilots. And they're busting their butt for their country and stuff. So, I really don't want to go mess up their... First of all, I want to take the risk of flying through the airspace. And then second of all... I don't want to, you know, just be selfish and go break up all their hardcore training and stuff that they're fighting and staying up night and day uh, trying to perfect their training and stuff to pass uh, and get their uh, get their wings and stuff. So anyway, this is what the uh, MOA kind of looks like. And like I said, I'll go back to this picture and show you. There's a lot of MOAs in the, in the area. So pretty much if we're here in Gainesville, and, uh, you know, we, we do a, a VFR cr cross country to the west or southwest, or even whenever I go up to um, Little Rock to visit my brother, I got to watch out for these MOAs. 
the uh, Rivers MOA, I, the, I believe the Hog MOA. And uh, a lot of times these are going to be reserve MOAs and they're not active every day, but you know certain days of the, of the month they may be active. So always, always try to use VFR flat following and uh, pick up um, and see if the MOAs are hot or if there's any aircraft in it. And I guarantee you, you don't want to be flying through these blocks of airspace without talking to somebody. You don't want to be, uh, you know, cruising through and you're 182 and all of a sudden look up and there's a there's a two ship formation, a T6 is coming out out of the top of the loop and you just barely missed them. So anyway, uh, I think it's a big area that no one's really no one really goes in depth about and it, and it needs to be discussed for our safety as long as the uh, the pilots in our armed forces are going through the pilots training and the stuff. We need to be as courteous to those guys as, as possible because they're fighting for our country and everything. So anyway, that's a lesson on MOAs. And if you got any questions or anything, just uh, shoot me an email. I'll be glad to respond to any questions or comments you guys got. So anyway, that's it. Hope you have a good day. See ya.